Kiyoto. Kiyoto te whanau, Papa Tuanuku. Ake, ake, ake. Thank you, Phoenix, for that wonderful performance. Thank you, all of you, for coming the day after an exhausting and somewhat depressing election <laughs> in the rain. And hey, we better get used to the rain because one thing we're going to have is more weather. Yeah. Last night was depressing for the climate, but today is actually even bigger. Today is about the big picture. It's not just about who governs New Zealand, it's about who rules the world. And we are here because of our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren, and we can't not keep on. Today, New Zealand leads, that's an accident of where we are in the, in the planet, but we lead global action for climate global action to persuade world leaders who are about to meet in New York that this is what the people want. For, 20, for 25 years, for many of you here were even born, world leaders have been meeting and talking about climate and making promises. And for 25 years, they have done nothing. And for 25 years, global emissions have continued to rise, and they're rising faster than ever. That is not okay. 17 years ago, world leaders reached an agreement, a binding protocol to reduce emissions. And emissions kept rising faster and faster. And New Zealand signed that because there was money to be made out of a short-term assistance from our forestry, and after the first term, they reneged on doing anything more when it was going to start costing. How cynical can you get? In the meantime, the scientists became desperate. They have warned us over and over again of increased storms, floods, fires, heat waves, drought. They have warned us of sea level rise. They are warning us now that we are passing tipping points where ice melt gets to the point where you can't stop it. Where the melting of the methane, releasing the methane into the, into the atmosphere is going to create a self-perpetuating cycle that can't be stopped. We have very little time. They have been telling us that for a long time now. In 2009, I went to the Copenhagen Climate Conference. It was my third climate conference. I was at Kyoto, I was at The Hague, and I went to Copenhagen along with much of the world with hope, with real hope that this time something was going to happen. This time, Obama was coming. This time, they were talking about real money to help developing countries. This time, they were talking about a new global agreement. And on the final night there, as we waited for hours and hours and hours for the last session that was meant to start, and then Obama took the stage and he started talking, and we gradually realised there is no agreement, there are no targets, there are no binding anything, uh, there is no money for developing countries, there is nothing. And I became really, really angry. And it was at that point that I said, OK, governments are not going to do it. Only the people can do it, and we have got to take control of this movement. So maybe I'm a slow learner. It took me a long time to give up faith in governments. But now the question is, what can we, the people, do when governments are busy going in the opposite direction? Well, I think there are three things we can do, and they all matter. The first one is we can block new fossil fuel developments anywhere and everywhere. We have to keep, we have to keep the coal in the hole. We have to stop new coal mines. We have to stop deep-sea oil drilling, not just because of oil on our beaches, although God knows that's bad enough, 
but because we cannot add more fossil fuels to the pool that the world can never afford to burn. We've got to make every tonne of coal and every litre of oil cost more to produce because we are in the way. We've got to be in the way at the planning process, we've got to be in the way at the mines, we've got to be in the way out at sea when the ships come. And that's an ongoing process until we've done it. The second thing we can do is we have to start seriously building the climate friendly future. We have to start the clean energy, well the clean energy revolution is underway actually, but we have to speed up the clean energy revolution. We have to speed up organic food growing. We have to speed up technologies that don't need oil. We have to speed up smart manufacturing, low carbon manufacturing, all the elements of an economy that's not based on fossil fuels. Both those number one and number, number, one and number two have to go hand in hand. If you just stop the oil and coal coming out of the ground and you haven't got an alternative, nobody will support you. If you just build the urn alternative and you don't stop the stuff coming out of the ground, you'll end up with both and it's just as bad for the climate as if you haven't bothered. So you've got to do both together. We've got to find allies. We've got to find allies in business. There aren't very many of them. Most of them are just greenwashing. But hey, the insurance industry was the first one to understand what is happening and they are on our side and we need to work with them. And there are other businesses who are also trying to build the green future and we have to work with them and build a big movement for a different kind of future. We have, this has to be based on communities. A lot of it has to be local. And the third thing we can do is don't let politicians get away with it. We mustn't let them off the hook. We don't have much hope in them changing, but in the end, politicians will do what an overwhelming majority of the people demand that they do. And we don't yet have an overwhelming majority of people. The people united will never be defeated, right, but we are not yet united. We have to gather in the rest of the people to work with us for a future and then the politicians will listen and they will change. Because the politicians are not going to lead into uncharted, scary territory. They've got too many business lobbyists at their throat the whole time. They will only follow where the people leave and we are the people. We've got another three years now to build the climate voter campaign from 60,000 people to a million people. That is our task. In 2017, we need a million climate voters at least. But whatever it takes, for the sake of your children and my grandchildren and all the other gorgeous and amazing species that we share this planet with, we have to do it and we have to never, ever, ever give up. Thank you. of what we're actually dealing with. So thank you so much. Now I would like to